For topic 15, we're going to move into yet another situation in which the immune system, although you know, developed to protect the body, actually harms the individual instead. And so we'll look at autoimmunity and how tolerance is breached to allow for the immune system to actually attack cell tissue. So we will consider um, a related set of diseases that um, really are derived from the fact that the adaptive immune response is misdirected and it starts to attack self tissues, which we call autoimmunity or autoimmune diseases. Um, again, like allergies that we, we saw earlier, autoimmunity or autoimmune diseases tend to be more common in countries that are um, more highly developed, more industrialized, and their frequencies are actually increasing. And um, one of the things that it's attributed to is the difference in our um, habits that we have as humans. Um, as compared to previous uh, life habits. So, you know, that could be anecdotal, but that's, that's part of the, the theory of why we have more autoimmunity now than we used to. Um, so these autoimmunity or these autoimmune diseases, they're very widely, there's a wide range of them. There's all, you know, many, many different types of autoimmunity. Um, and they, they kind of focus on either autoimmune response to a particular cell type or an organ, like we see with the beta cells in um, type 1 diabetes. Um, they could be more systemic and attack tissues across or all over the body. Um, but the other thing that we see with autoimmune diseases is that they tend to be more common in females than they are in males. So pretty much we're looking at, well, we are looking at the adaptive immune response and, and pretty much we're looking at an effector T cell response, but then the T cells can drive the antibody responses. So they can both be antibody and effector T cells that attack healthy tissues or healthy cells, um, cells and tissues, um, as though those cells and tissues were infected with a pathogen or were the pathogen themselves. And what that does is it produces reactions that resemble those, those hypersensitivities, specifically type two, three, and four hypersensitivity reactions. Some of them are gonna be antibody driven um, and others are going to be cell mediated. So the deal with autoimmunity is that once it's initiated, it usually continues throughout the life of the individual um, and um, can broaden in scope and increase the tissues that are affected and the severity of the disease. So once you have an autoimmune disease, it's pretty much going to be with you for the rest of your life. Now, because disease causing antibody and effector cells recognize these self antigens, you know, that discrimination between self and non self, autoimmune diseases are going to recognize self. They lose that discrimination. And so, really, it's a failure of tolerance. We, we talked about central tolerance, we talked about peripheral tolerance, both with B cells and T cells. And somewhere along the line, this tolerance is lost. So although much is known about um, the different effects of autoimmune diseases, there's not a whole lot known about what actually initiates these autoimmune diseases in the beginning. There's some ideas and there's some, um, you know, uh, hypotheses out there, but for, for many of them, it's, it's really truly unknown. Now, the um, hypersensitivities, yes, it kind of uh, resembles these type two, three, and four hypersensitivity reactions. And let's look at each one of those individually. Um, recall that when we classified these a few topics ago, we talked about how with the type two hypersensitivity, that's going to be an alteration in some surface protein that now gets recognized as being um, bad or pathogenic. Um, in type three, that's going to be where there are antibody um, uh, complexes that are deposited in the tissues. And then with type four, that's cell mediated, where we have the, the T cells actually causing the destruction. 
So here are some examples of um, autoimmune diseases that um, kind of correspond to the type 2 hypersensitivity, where we had antibody directed against some sort of cellular component. And that cellular component, although isn't pathogenic, it seems to the body that it is. And so this would be where um, we have like the, the Graves disease, uh, we've heard of rheumatic fever. Um, what else have you probably heard of? Oh, our autoimmune hemolytic anemia, we talked about that in the case study. Um, and so you can take a look at these autoimmune diseases, check out what the autoantigen is or what the self-antigen is, and then what those consequences are. I'm not gonna go through all of those. These are tables right out of your text. For a type 3 hypersensitivity, that's those uh, um, immune complexes that get deposited in the tissues. And so um, lupus is probably the one of the three here that you've probably heard of where you can have um, deposition of these immune complexes in the kidneys, which can lead to um, destruction of the kidney tissue. Um, and then if, it, if those complexes get deposited in the joints, that can lead to an arthritis and such. Um, and then again, it shows what the autoantigens are um, or what those self-antigens are. My cat was on my lap. Um, and then the type 4 hypersensitivity reactions, again, mediated by T cells. And so rheumatoid arthritis, where you actually have T cells just destroying the tissues, destroying that synovial area. Um, multiple sclerosis, where you have the myelin being destroyed by T cells, um, and, and where you have your type 1 diabetes. Although we have it listed here as an autoimmune disease, it's kind of a short-lived autoimmune disease because once those beta cells have been destroyed, then it's pretty much done because there's no more autoantigen left. Okay, so various mechanisms that have been put into place to prevent these autoimmune diseases to occur. And these are things that we talked about when we looked at B cell development and we looked at T cell development. And we talked about how um, there were checkpoints in place to make sure that um, any self-reactive T and B cells were negatives, negatively, negatively selected against. And so there's these combination of mechanisms really do a pretty good job and they're usually very effective in maintaining that self-tolerance. It's just when that's lost that we end up with an autoimmune disease. And so these autoimmune diseases occur on really relatively rare occasions. Pretty much it works like it's supposed to, but it's when that self-tolerance is lost. And that can be to a single self-antigen or it can be to a variety of antigens that are systemic. So in effect, then, the autoimmune response really strives to eliminate all of that autoantigen or those target antigens from the body. And that can be achieved really in two ways. One, the patient dies, or um, the, the cells are completely, like the tissues are completely taken away, like we see in type 1 diabetes. Um, but what usually happens is that there's just going to be a chronic state of inflammation, a chronic state of lymphocyte activation, infiltration, where those autoantigens are found, which can then relate to the symptoms that we see with different autoimmune diseases. And so these symptoms really can severely interfere with tissue function, um, and it can also provide uh, inflammatory environment, which can end up leading to continued activation of other effector cells or leading to the production of other effector cells, which can result in further loss of tolerance. And then that can increase the breadth and the strength of any autoimmune disease. So although these regulatory mechanisms of the immune system respond to a situation, um, there can be temporary relief. And lots of times these autoimmune diseases can be episodic where they will, they'll kind of like have symptoms and then they drop down. And then there's kind of a, a stasis period where there's not a lot of symptoms and then there can be a flare up. Um, and a lot of treatments kind of aim to decrease the number of flare-ups because autoimmune diseases are rarely ever resolved, nor are they ever really cured. Um, and so 
it essentially it's a chronic disease that an individual can have and that immune response um, can remain suspended in that destructive phase um, and never reach the phase at which um, inflammation is replaced or replaced with like repair mechanisms or um, reconstruction of any destroyed tissue. So I'm going to stop there with this first part and then we'll dive into um, some other aspects of autoimmunity in the next part of this lecture.